Welcome back guys, this is Ashwin. In this video, we are going to solve the problem 3D surface area. Madison is a little girl who is fond of toys. Her friend Mason works in a toy manufacturing factory. Mason has a 2D board A of size H and W with H rows and W columns. So there will be a board with uh, some height and width. The board is divided into cells of size 1 cross 1, that is like 1 cube with each cell indicated by its coordinate i, j. The cell i, j has an integer a of i, j written on it. To create a toy, Mason stacks a of i, j, number of cubes of size 1 cross 1 cross 1 on the cell i, j. So he basically stacks cube on top of each other to create this toy. Given the description of the board showing the values of a of i, j and that the price of the toy is equal to the 3D surface area, Find the price of the toy. Okay, this is the toy Mason has tagged. The price of the toy is equal to the 3D surface area. The surface area means the area covered by all the sides. All the sides means here we have six sides. That means six spaces. So for each space, for each surface, we need to calculate the area. So let's see some examples to understand it clearly. Here we have one cross one board and he placed one cube on top of it and the surface area is 6. So uh, I have already said the surface area means is the number of faces. So here for the cube we have 6 faces. So the answer is 6. Let's see some other example. Here we have 3 cross 3 cube and these are the cubes that are stacked on top of each other and the surface area is 60. Okay, let's check the constraints. Here the constraint is up to 100 and in the board we have at least one cube placed on it and the maximum can go up to 100. Now, how we are going to calculate the surface area for the input like this? First, we can calculate the top and bottom surface easily because if we multiply the height and width of the board, we can calculate the top and bottom of the board. And for the remaining surfaces, we calculate it by using the adjacent cells. Consider this middle block, the height is 2. If we take on the left side, it has a smaller block that is 1. If we take a difference, that is 1, we add it to the area. And for the right, same condition applies, so we add 1 to it. And for the downside, there are no cells here, so that is 0. 2 minus 0 is 2, we add 2 to the area. And for the top side, the cell's height is 2, so 2 minus 2 is 0, so nothing will be added. Okay, let's solve the problem by using the logic we have found. First, we need to calculate the area for top and bottom. That is top and bottom. Area equals 2 multiplies H multiplies W. H multiplies W covers the board area and we are multiplying it by 2 because we are covering two sides that is top and bottom. And for the remaining surfaces, we need to consider the adjacent cells. For that, let's define some increments xi equals list, yi equals an empty list. The adjacent cells will be 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, and minus 1, 0. These are the adjacent cells we are going to iterate. Now we need to iterate the matrix for x in range h. That is the row for y in range w, that is the column. After that, we need to iterate the increments value for i, j in zip xi, yi. So, for each iteration, it will iterate each value from it. Now, the final operation area 
plus equals max of 0 comma a of x y minus check of i comma j why i am using a check function is sometimes in the first row and the last column if we go in the negative side it will go out of range for that we need to return zero that's why i am using a function let's define the function now so def check of i comma j now we need to return the value if it's within the range or else we need to return zero so return a of x plus i and y plus j if 0 less than or equal to x plus i less than h and 0 less than or equal to y plus j less than w else return 0. The if condition checking for the row range and the column range if it satisfies the condition it will return the value from the matrix or else it will return 0. This will return the difference. Sometimes it may return a negative value. For that only I am using 0. Let's consider this example. If I consider the last block and the adjacent cell is this with height 2 it will return minus 1. For that we don't need to add any value. That's why we are using 0 here. Okay, this function checks the limit and this operation gives area from adjacent cells. From adjacent cells. Finally, return the area. Return area. Let's run the code. It passed the sample test case. Let's submit it. That's it guys. We solved the problem. If you like the video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe the channel for future videos. See you soon guys.